Are you a good person? No. It depends on how you define good. Okay, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Well thought out. All right. Well, by man's standards, probably a pretty good person, right? By God's standards, what do you think? Have you kept the Ten Commandments pretty well? I ain't going to tell you no, so. Okay. So, um, so if I asked you if you ever told a lie, what would you say? Okay, I have to. What do you call a person who tells lies? A lie? Right. Okay. How about this? Have you ever, uh, have you ever taken anything that doesn't belong to you? Um, I have, but... You have, but... Yeah, I'll quit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll have two. Okay. What do you call a person who does that? A thief. A thief, exactly. Um, how about this? Uh, have you ever looked at looked at a woman to lust after her? Yes, sir. You have to. You know, Jesus said that, uh, he said, You've heard in days of old that thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, then you've already committed adultery with her in your heart, right? Yeah. Um, one more. Let's, let's do one more. Uh, have you ever taken God's name in vain? In other words, have you ever used God's name like Have you ever said G-O-D-D? Yeah, exactly. Have you ever said that one? I have, but it hasn't been that one. Have you ever done that recently? Okay. Um, well, have you ever said like, oh my, G-O-D? You know, something like that? Done that? Okay. In other words, using God's name to express something that, that you know, you could have used another word for rather than just throwing... The, the, the God of the universe that gave you life and, you know, and sent his son to die for you instead of using his name commonly. The, the, you know, the Bible calls that blasphemy, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it sure does, man. Well, I'm going to stop there and say, you know, you, you say you're a good person, okay? Um, and, and I do too. I think, yeah, I think I'm a good person. But, by our own admission, that makes us blind, thieving, blasphemous, and don't the heart. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. So, what if, we turn it over, what if something happened to you today? Let's say you stepped off that curb and you got hit by a city bus, God forbid, okay? And it just killed you out of just straight, you know, no pain or nothing, you just died right then and there. You know, the Bible says, it's given to man but wants to die, and then comes judgment. Hell we right? Know. It comes the judgment. So, if you died tonight and had to stand in front of God according to His standards, do you think He'd find you innocent or guilty? Guilty because of all the stuff you've done? Is that what you said? Okay. Well, that's a pretty good answer. Okay. So, if God were to find you guilty, do you think he'd send you to heaven or hell? Hell? That's right. Does that concern you? It concerns me too. Do you know what God did for us so that we don't have to go to hell? What did he do? That's good, Billy. Yeah. Do you know how to receive that? How do you receive that, Billy? Repent. That's it. Repent. That's the word I'm looking for. Do you know what to repent means? Well, that's part of it, asking for forgiveness. But to repent actually means to turn away from. Them. Okay. In other words, you know the Bible says a, a drunkard returns to his drink like a dog returns to his vomit. We do that with sin. One weekend we go out and we live like. Well, literally, we live like hell. And then the, we go home and we go, Oh, God, I'm sorry. I, should, I know I shouldn't have done this. And I know I shouldn't have done that. And we kind of hang our head for a little while. And then the next weekend, what are we going to do? Same thing. That's right. See, so that's not really repenting. To repent means that you've gone to it already. Don't return. Because that's the way a dog does with his bones. A dog returns to its bones. See, we... That, that sin is like vomit to God. And if we go back to it, that's not repenting. To repent means don't go back to it. To turn away from it. Make a conscious effort to stop doing it. You see? 
And then, and then we got to do something else. You know what that, that other thing is? We have to trust. We have, we have to trust that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Okay? And what I mean by trust is not to just believe it. To believe it's not enough. Did you know that Satan himself believes that Christ died on the cross for you? Did you know that? The devil believes that? He would have, the devil was one of God's angels. Angels, that's right, man. That's right. That's right. But see, he broke God's law. So he went against God. And that's what happened to him. So, just to believe that Christ died on that cross is not enough, is it? We have to actually put that belief on. We have to have faith that, that Jesus died for our sins. If you were in an airplane, and say there's a parachute in the seat next to you, and they said, hey, y'all, the parachute's going down. I'm the parachute, I'm sorry, not the parachute, the plane. And if Billy, the plane's going down, man. Are you going to run out that door and jump and say, boy, I believe in that parachute? You can do that. No, you're not going to believe in the parachute. You're going to put the parachute on, right? Because that's what stands between you and certain death. Okay? Well, see, it's the same way with Jesus. You can't just believe in Him. You've got to put that faith on. You've got to know that when Christ died on that cross, He died for you, Billy. He died personally for you. And He took all the sins that you've ever committed, He took them on Himself as a perfect sacrifice. And when He bled and died and hung on that cross, that he took that sin with him. And you have to have faith. You have to put that faith on like you put that parachute on and cling to that because that's what stands between you and certain death. Just like that parachute stands between you and the ground. See? You think you can do that? Right on. Have you got a Bible at home? Okay. If you don't, i got extras. Okay. Well, Billy, thank you for your time and I appreciate the interview.